Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up this week's theme of retro video game music, moving away from the consoles of primarily the Super NES this week, um, and moving into the world of personal computers. Today we're looking at a song written by Stephane Peek for the 1992 Dune game. Now, the music for this was written for the AdLib sound card, which was one of the first standardized sound cards for the personal computers, and it was usurped by Creative Labs with their Sound Blaster 16, which Sound Blaster is still a name that's around, and AdLib is not. I have played many a DOS game with the AdLib uh, synthesizer, and it'll be real nice to return back to this. I have a bit of nostalgia for this sound. So... Let's see what Stephane Peake did with the track Arrakis from the Dune soundtrack. Very rhythmically syncopated, has a nice driving energy, but musically it's fine just sitting where it's at. There's this contrast there. It's interesting because it's a bit more industrial sounding than I would expect for Dune. But it also sort of captures the vibe. Yeah, dude, the swell. Also, heavy compression. Very little compression. Yeah, very cool. It's very percussive. I'd almost say that it's percussive first. Any melody that comes from that is a nice bonus, but the rhythmic element is the main component of the song. That warble, it's sparingly used, but works so well every time it comes in. Yeah, the attack is really solid and the volume backs off a little bit after that. It's a strong accent, but the held portion is quieter. So once again, it just creates this rhythmic component to the melody. Those really heavy accents that play against our percussion. Cool little 
little twinkling effect there that diverged into fizzing. And what's cool is that background sound, but even our four chords, our four main notes at the top, had swelling and release going in them on a larger scale. Very cool call and response here. Hold out the notes. This other idea fills in the space. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, it's really interesting. I'm glad we got to wrap up the week with this. There was a, a strong chance that we would have ended up with another Super NES song, which I still, like I mentioned yesterday, I enjoy that we got to go through them. It's a system I didn't really get to listen to uh, the sound, the music of as much, not having one growing up. But I do have a really big soft spot for the AdLib synthesizer. Um, and stuff like this. I mean, the very first low note that came in, first thing popped in my head was uh, Blakestone. I think, it was, I think it's Blakestone. I think it's the uh, first part of the, the theme on that. It's been a long time. <laughs> uh yeah, like, it's just, it's interesting from another level, because, like, when we talk about the Super NES stuff this week with Donkey Kong Country and Secret of Mana and Legend of Zelda, part of that, part of each of those videos was, dude, they're doing some really cool stuff at making this, obviously, synthesizer-based music sound like instruments. That sounds like a violin. This sounds like a trumpet. This sounds like a flute. This goes the exact opposite direction. I don't know if this synthesizer card... I mean, it came out a few years before the Super NES did. Um, so it's... Uh, yeah, the technology isn't going to be as good as what was put into the Super NES, I think. But I, I do think that there might have been a possibility for these sounds to be pushed towards a more natural angle. But, you know, Stefan didn't do that chose to go a very different route and go for a very electronic sound and i think it's interesting we didn't do any of that this week oh yeah because our other one our non-super nintendo uh video this week was one winged angel from final fantasy 7 on the playstation 1 also though utilizing some th synthesizer tones in order to replicate a uh, an orchestra natural instruments so this is the only one this week that <laughs> wrote video game music with uh, an intent to sound more digital. And I think it's also the oldest one, uh, the oldest game of uh, and the oldest technology too. But I don't know. I just think it's really interesting. A lot of people wanted me to check out synth work that sounds similar-ish to acoustic instruments. And then I, we got lucky and this one came through to wrap the, the week up. But uh, just because it doesn't sound natural or isn't aiming to emulate those uh, acoustic instruments, 
It doesn't mean that I think that there's less of interest in the sonic qualities here. The sounds that we do get are really interesting. Now, I take them for granted a little bit. Part of that is just my nostalgia for it, but also because electronic music has particularly used many of these sounds more and more, and they've become commonplace. I don't know how frequent any of these sounds might have been heard in 1992 outside of possibly this soundtrack. I don't know if electronic composers or electronic music makers, whatever you want to call them, producers, were uh, utilizing sounds like this in electronic music yet. I'm going to wager they were, <laughs> um, but I just, I don't have the context for that. I was not conscious of music at this time in my life. I was single digits in age. <laughs> Uh, if it made cool sounds, I was in. I was, I was in for a good ride. I didn't know anything about what these ble beeps and bloops or guitar sounds were, or any of it. So, you know, I don't have context for any of that. But where am I going with all this? I feel like I've started rambling. I sh don't like to ramble on these. Oh yeah, is it? This feels very forward facing to me. And like I said, I don't know that I can take it at f at full face value and appreciate it completely. Uh, for what it's doing, because I am used to these sounds now, but it is very cool to listen to these. It feels very futuristic, at least in my perception of trying to place myself in a past that I was not musically cognizant of, <laughs> and trying to understand it retrospectively from ears that are very much modern. But I want to get into some of this. So what's going on? There's some cool stuff in here I wouldn't expect. One of that is just pure contrast. We have volume swells. We have textures that get manipulated over time. Um, we have rising and falling layering. Just a lot of ways to create contrast from moment to moment, honestly. If you listen to this song you'll notice that everything sort of works in eight bar phrases, which is not a lot of room. The song has a very fast pace to it, despite its laid back feel. I think that's really interesting. And the percussion certainly gives it a bit of that momentum, but it doesn't really feel like the song is moving at a fast pace until you try to keep up with it. There are so many times during, I was like, oh, that was pretty interesting. And by the time I've pointed it out, we're on to a totally different idea or that instrument is doing something wildly different now. And so, you know, every time I pointed something out, I'm like, dang, they're just going to have to rewind it to hear that now. And it happens so frequently. And it's because the song does just continuously move. It doesn't stop at all. Um, so yeah, there's, there's contrast just in that. We always have something moving too. Um, even when we look at specific ideas, we'll listen to, uh, you know, what the, what the lead melody is doing or whatever. There's usually one repetition to it. You get your first time through, then the repeat of the loop, and then we're on to something new. There really isn't a lot of creating a riff and building off of it in this case. It's, you know, this section does this, it evolves into this, this completely changes to this section, this section goes to that section, that section evolves into this. It's all about what comes next. And, uh, you know, I made the same comment about Nobu Uematsu's One Winged Angel back on Tuesday. Uh, it's a song that is very interested in where it's going more so than where it's at. It is constantly changing. Always pushing forward to the next idea and trying to find a way to tie what we're currently working into that. It's a very quick pace. But at least with that track, the intensity was also present musically. Here it isn't. Despite the quick movement through the structure, a lot of the song is laid back temporally as far as the tempo is concerned, um, but even there's a lot of long held out notes in this. Our melodies are not quickly moving. It's about building out these long ideas. It feels like urgency betrayed by an inability to move. I don't I'm not super knowledgeable about Dune. I did not play this game. I don't know what Arrakis is, though I've heard the word before. I watched Dune Part 1 a couple years back. It took me six sittings to watch it. I just could not stay focused on it. It never kept my attention. And honestly, when it ended, I 
didn't know what happened in it. And I mean, part of that's the fragmented watch procedure. <laughs> I have had zero interest in checking out part two, um, but I am interested in checking out the 70s Dune film just because that was uh, David Lynch, I believe. And while I've heard it is not super faithful, it's David Lynch. So I feel like I have to check that out sometime in my life. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I like, I have zero chance of figuring out what this sort of driven percussion and driven momentum juxtaposed with a very laid back music, atmosphere, melody, what that's supposed to represent. And without lyrics to help me figure out what it's supposed to represent, I'm just, I'm not going to get it today. But for anybody who is familiar with Dune and Arrakis and anything else related to either the novel, the game, or probably even the movie, since they're all based off the same thing, uh, if you want to give me your interpretation of that, toss it down in the comments section. Now, aside from this, there is a lot of call and response in here. And I pointed out some of it towards the end. You will frequently hear one idea go off and then it might hold out a note or it might just be silence. And then another idea will fill in that new space. will return back to that first instrument. Sometimes they'll play the exact same lick. Sometimes they'll move into the next part of their idea and then they will hold out a note again. And another, maybe sometimes a different instrument will come in and fill the new space. And this really is how a lot of this song is written. It's not about one instrument getting the melody. It's sort of like a hocket in a sense, where multiple instruments share the melodic line and they take turns playing it. But instead of focusing on maybe a couple of notes and having all of the timbres of the instruments intermingle in that way, it's more of a passing of the baton, where I'll play one quarter, you'll play another quarter, this dude will play that the third quarter, and then the final chord will be played by another instrument, maybe, maybe even the first instrument. It's about taking turns laying down the melody. But what, allow, what this allows them, though, is to add harmony around it. Because after you play your quarter, then you hold out a note. And so the next piece is played on top of this new note, which adds harmonic information to all the rest of the chordal information present. Um, and as we continue to build this, we expand out this foundational harmony that sits underneath the melody. It's a very cool way of building up layers without it really seeming like that's what's happening. I think that's very cool. One other thing that I enjoy about this is a very rhythmic first approach to it. I'm pretty sure we've checked out something from Stephane Peak before. might have even been from this Dune soundtrack. Um... But I don't remember anything particular, well, I don't have any characteristic of composition tied to his name in my mental filing cabinet. So I'm not sure if this is typical for their writing, but it's very rhythmic first. And I find this interesting because we've actually listened to other soundtrack music like this. Uh, a long time ago, we checked out something from, I think it was the drummer of the police, and it's... A shame I can't remember his name. Um, he ended up doing the soundtrack for one of the Spyro games on the PlayStation 1. And I had mentioned that it was very rhythmic, which made sense to me because it came from a drummer. I don't know Stefane's musical background. But I do find it interesting that so many instruments here are rhythmic oriented. Even the melodic ones. I pointed out uh, that we had those uh, stingers on a melody. It was like, bum, bum, bum. Bum, and you come in hard with this really big accent and then you back the energy off you back the volume down just a hair bit and then hold out your note as you would normally what it does is create these these fierce punches these these fierce attacks at the beginning of all these notes which to my mind you get this really big burst of energy and then the music sort of fades into the background, not necessarily in the mix. It's still the lead melody. It's still the most present, but it just isn't as prominent as the rhythmic, the, the, the accentuated point. And so I end up hearing these melodies rhythmically first. I feel those accented beats or off beats and the way that they juxtapose what's going on in the percussion and the rhythm that they're uh, playing more so than hearing it as the lead melody. And this actually happens a lot throughout the track 
where I will more frequently be drawn to the polyrhythmic ideas, listening to the rhythms of the accents from this instrument and the rhythm of the entrance of this little uh, ornamental idea, all of that juxtaposed with what's going on in the percussion, which is a lot, and listening to uh, the rhythm that our foundational instruments, giving us our chords, what they're playing and how that fits into the rhythmic stuff, all that tended to take precedence over me listening to the song harmonically or even melodically. So much of this song is dominated by rhythmic cadence and how the cadences play off of each other and play around each other. And it's wild that I even get most of that information from melodic instruments. Um, I don't really have much to add to that. Again, maybe there's something that fans of Dune can interpret from that. It's simply just a pattern I saw. Speaking of, since I brought up harmony, atmosphere, there is something interesting going on with the harmony here in that the chord progression tends to feel... It has a little bit of a Middle Eastern flair to it, but it doesn't really dig enough into it for me to say, oh yeah, this is probably, you know, Phrygian or Phrygian dominant or something like that. It, it's like halfway there, but it never quite gets it. And so it has a little bit of the edge that Phrygian tends to utilize or is, is characterized by, but it also has a little bit of a, a, a dullness to it. Something that just feels like it is. And I don't know what mode that would be. Like, you know, major tends to be a bit happier. And, you know, you have your ominous modes. You have your sadder modes, like minor. and But this one just feels like it is with a hair bit of edge to it. There really isn't, as far as I get, any danger or adventure or anything. It feels like it just is a lot of the time. And again, I don't know what I'm supposed to be interpreting. Maybe Arrakis means something to people and they're like, yeah, actually, you know, just sort of existing works well with that word and what it's supposed to mean. I don't know. But I did find that the, I don't necessarily want to say a blandness to the atmosphere, but sort of uh, an indifference of atmosphere is something that also sort of pushed me away from it and said, hey, you know, I should check out what's going on with the rhythm more often. <laughs> Uh, because it is what, what stood out to me a lot. Um, I know I started off with this, but I didn't like go into detail, which is kind of dumb. There's a lot of really cool sounds in here. In here? There's a lot of really cool sounds in here. We have uh, the warble. We have this really fast fluctuation. We have something that reminds me of like a radar ping. Um... There's just a lot of stuff that feels very digital, but it's applied in ways that are very textural and rhythmic, ways to embellish upon the more traditional harmonic and melodic and, and percussive playing here, and adding specific flair to the song that makes it stand out from other tracks that might be employing similar vibes or atmospheres through the traditional musical elements. And I find these to be very interesting. They did take my mind out of the music at times and made me think, huh, how would you even make that sound? Or what is that sound supposed to represent? Um, but I, I just think it's part of the aspect of it. I had mentioned at one point that it felt a bit industrial to me, which feels weird because Dune is sort of a future past melding technologies, definitely more futuristic in some ways, but people live less technologically in other ways and it's very desert filled planet uh, again i'm basing this off the little i remember from dune part one <laughs> so uh i might be a little off with some of these details but industrial music isn't necessarily the first thing i would think of for the little bit of dune that i know but what's strange is that it all sort of comes together in a way that feels like it fits dune and I'm kind of curious if anybody who's a big fan of the films and the books, maybe you've never played the game. Maybe you never had a sound card and you played the game on silent. Does this song feel like it fits the universe to you, a, a big fan, opposed to me who barely knows anything about the series? 
Um, I'm kind of curious if anybody else feels that same way as I do, and that it just fits, even though it's not the first type of music, the first genre of music I would necessarily think of. Uh, if I were told, hey, you got to write music for this uh, thing, it's about a bunch of people living on a desert planet, and uh, they live simpler lives. And I'm like, yeah, industrial music. Like, that's not where I would have went, but it works. It just matches. I don't know. Those are my thoughts. Stephane Peake's uh, Arrakis from the 1992 Dune PC game. Utilizing the ad-lib synthesizer card. Sounds so good. I love it. Anyways, what are your thoughts about this? Do you have anything to correct me on? Maybe just have your own thoughts and opinions about this. Place all that stuff down in the comment section. I asked uh, some questions earlier. If you have answers to those, drop them in the comment section as well. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. All right, that wraps it up for this one. We do have some brand new music from a uh, creator we've had on the channel before, but it was during a, a collaboration. So we're going to be exploring some of Dan Kane's solo work next. If that doesn't interest you, though, which it should, because Dan Kane, uh, that song, I don't remember what it was called. I remember the album art was like pink and purple, and it was like a cabin in front of some mountains. It was very cozy, and the music was very cozy, too. But I can't remember what the project was called, and unfortunately, I can't remember who they collabed with. But anyways, it was awesome. I'm looking forward to this. But if that's not your jam, I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC. We're going to check out an album all the way through. These videos are like three to four album, three to four hours long. Um, they're very deep dives into a full work of art. And then Sunday, we'll have our live stream at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time as usual. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos.